Hi, today's lesson is a surprise. I want you to take just a minute and listen to nature. I'm not sure if you can hear it, but there are all kinds of sounds being made out here today, and they're all made by one particular species, birds. Birds are everywhere. They are in the city, they are out in, in the wilderness, and they can make all kinds of great sounds if you just stop and listen. Each bird has its own particular call. That's not all birds have that's unique to them, though. They have beaks that are very unique. Some beaks are very short and tiny. Some are very long and skinny. Each beak determines what that animal eats, what that bird eats. The bird then has to live wherever its food supply is. So if a bird has a very long skinny beak, usually it's because they're gonna eat nectar from flowers. So they're gonna to need to live near flowering plants. Some birds have very tiny, short beaks and they eat small seeds. Others have very uh, medium sized beaks, but stocky for banging into wood and tree trunks and getting insects out. Some beaks are very long and large and they scoop fish out of the water. Have you ever seen any of these birds? The next time you see a bird close up, take a minute and look at its beak. It's very special. Charles Darwin was amazed by the variation in the characteristics of plants and animals he encountered on his journeys. In any habitat, food is limited and the types of foods available may vary. Animals that have variations that enable them to take advantage of available foods will be more likely to survive. We call beneficial inherited variations adaptations. Adaptations are inherited characteristics that increase an organism's chance of survival. Those with the most helpful adaptations will be the most likely to live long enough to pass on their genes to the next generation. This process ensures that beneficial adaptations will continue in future generations, while disadvantageous characteristics will not. In today's activity, we are going to demonstrate how different birds eat with their beaks. So for example, let's take these tweezers. This is a copy of a particular bird's beak, usually a sparrow, something like that. Well, you have a very tiny beak, and that means they're gonna eat small foods like seeds. This is a, an example of a beak that scoops maybe out of the water, filters out the things they don't want and swallows what they do. This is a good example of a larger beak that can get into tree bark and eat very big insects or even small, but they can pull them out or maybe they're pulling worms out of the ground with this, but it grabs and holds on. This is another type of beak like that, short, stocky, but yet very strong, can get insects out of bark, can catch them in the air maybe, and again, can pull them out of the ground. This is going to be my bird's stomach. Sam and I are going to play, an act, play a game where we are going to try to fill our stomachs with varying food, various foods. And those foods are going to fill our stomachs and make us um, happy birds. So you want to get to watch us try different beaks and see what foods we can gather with our beaks. So Sam has the fork, which acts as a beak that scoops, maybe like a bird scooping out of the water. I have the tweezers. The tweezers are very small, so what kind of food do you think those tweezers are going to get? You're right if you said something very small. So I'm going to say ready, set, go, and we're going to try to fill our stomachs with food. Are you ready, Sam? I'm ready. Ready, set, go. Okay, our time's up. Sam, show us what you caught. Oh, I was able to get some of the big food items with my scooper beak. You sure were. You're not gonna be a hungry bird. Your stomach's full. Let me show you what I got. What do all of my food particles have in common? They're very tiny. So I could pick this up with my tiny beak, 
these little rice grains with my tiny beak, and this little rubber band like a small worm with my tiny beak. So I'm going to have to live where these kinds of foods are because that's all I can eat. Sam's going to have to live where her types of foods are because of her beak. Birds have to live where the food is that their beaks can eat. You can do the same activity at home. All you will need is a plate or a tray or a casserole dish that you can contain the food in. If not, it may go everywhere. You need some small items like rubber bands, pasta noodles, grains of rice, pom-poms, beads, paper clips, little twisties, anything small that you can find that can look like a worm or a bug that a bird might eat. You also need different beaks. A fork works great. These little chip clip bag holders work great. Pliers work well. Tweezers work well. Can you think of some other things that would be just like a bird's beak? If so, grab those items and go have some competitions with your family and see what beaks work best for what foods. I'd like to read a book to you now called The Best Beak in Bunaroo Bay. The birds have gathered at the bay for a competition to see who actually has the best beak. Just wait and see how it turns out. On most days, Boonaroo Bay is a calm and quiet place, but this was not always so. One morning, not so very long ago, the birds began to bicker. And it wasn't a little scuffle over food or nesting places. They were quarreling about something much more serious. Who has the best beak in Boonaroo Bay? Let's look at these birds. Look at that bird with a long beak. And this one has a short, strong beak. Look at that one. It's got little nubs on the end. Look at this long beak. How about this one? It has a hook on the end. I bet we're going to learn about all of these beaks. My beak has the most exquisite shape, declared the royal spoonbill. Exquisite, scoffed the darter. I can't imagine how you catch anything with that monstrosity. Of course, nothing is quite so handsome and useful as a hook, pro proclaimed the cormorant. A hook, spluttered the curlew. A hook is no match for my slender curved beak. The best kind of beak, insisted the oyster catcher, is a strong, sharp wedge, just like mine. And so the argument continued long and loud. Finally, the wise old pelican spoke. If you must decide who has the best beak in Boonaroo Bay, a contest is the answer. The birds were most impressed with this idea, and so they began to plan. This is the sign they put up. The best beak contest. Attention beak owners. What time does it start? First magpie call after the return of the sheer water. Where is it going to be held? Where Curlew Creek meets Pelican Point. Now this is the conditions of entry. Number one, entry is free and open to all Boonaroo Bay resident beak owners. Number two, this is a contest of skill and chance plays no part. Number three, the judge's decision will be final and no further bickering will be entered into. Number four, Prize medals are not transferable and cannot be exchanged for worms, fish, clams, etc. In the twinkling of a sandpiper's eye, it was time for the contest to proceed. There are five elements, announced the pelican. The bird who wins most of these events will have, without a feather of a doubt, the best beak in Boonaroo Bay. Easy, muttered the spoonbill. Let us begin, continued the pelican. To win the first event, you must collect the shrimp from the shallow mud near the mangroves. With his wide beak swishing from side to side, the royal spoonbib sieved the mud quickly and thoroughly. In no time, he had gathered a pile of shrimp, while the other birds had none. I knew my beak was the best, squawked the spoonbill. 
The contest is not finished yet, interrupted the pelican. To win the next event, the contestant must spear a fish. Can you see how the spoonbill would have been able to catch shrimp very easily? Before the others had even flinched a feather, the darter disappeared. Look at the darter. What is that? That's the tail of a fish. And then emerged. Look, he speared a fish. Superbly spiked, cried the pelican. However, the contest is still not over. To win the next event, you must extract the clam from this rock hard shell. Look at this. Away he goes to get that clam out of the shell. The birds began to hammer and prod, except for the oyster catcher. Carefully, she forced her strong chisel beak between the two parts of the shell and snap. Expertly open, exclaimed the pelican. But of course, two events still remain. The winner of the next event must find a worm deep down in the sand. Look at the worms down in that sand. Look at that perfect beak. This time, only the curlew knew what to do. A perfect plunge, remarked the pelican. Now for the last event, you must catch a slippery, slithery eel. Impossible, declared the spoonbill, but the cormorant did not even hear him. Look at the cormorant headed for that eel. Magnificently hooked, shouted the pelican. And congratulations to you all. This can't be, sputtered the spoonbill. I'm afraid so, replied the darter. It seems incredible, but it appears that we are all winners. And indeed, there is no very best beak in Boonaroo Bay. See, every bird has a medal for winning in their entry. Now there is no need for bickering in Boonaroo Bay. Once again, it is a calm and quiet place, except for a splash here and a snap there as each beat hunts in its own best way. The end.